Right, this is a continuation of the previous video about possibly modifying these cheap fake condenser microphones. Now, um, I showed in the previous one that these uh, will still give it output to some extent with the microphone lead disconnected. You can see the microphone output cable is disconnected there. If I tap it, I'm getting quite significant peaks on the audio channel. Oh, by the way, the uh, the left channels uh, through the other half of this uh, stereo uh, MXL603 pair, which is one of the camera support, and the right channel is the uh, cheap mic. So that's uh, for noise testing now, just the electronics level. I'm going to turn the gain up absolutely full on that. There's no signal. I'll actually hold it via the cable. Yeah, I can see noise now on the trace. And that's just purely electronics noise. Now, as before, uh, it's using the Focusrite interface, which is exceptionally good uh, low noise signal. Yeah, it's very good signal to noise ratio. Uh, extremely good. Uh, better than. Uh, lot of uh, so-called oleophile gear and only about 100 pounds or so anyway this is this has got the extra noise reduction mod in it to filter the Zeno regulator but that's about as far as I can go on this one due to the size it's trying to change the little surface mount multi-layer ceramics that are the noise pickup or the mechanical noise pickup is just not really practical so this is uh, plan B, take that board out and put a different one in. Now I've not actually tested the board yet, I've built it, uh, but it has not been tested yet. So let's see how it goes. I didn't try to, try to fit it in the case yet. There's always a possibility it won't. One of the capacitors is rather large, I might have to change it, but um, that won't stop doing electrical tests. Right, so that's now disconnected. Let's remove it from there. Give you a close up of the original board. Right, this is the one I'm putting in. This is a prototype. Um, next version will have the uh, overlapping print fix and a bit more labelling, but there's no functional changes. And this is what I've designed as a kind of universal uh, mic upgrade board. It can be built. To work with uh, a standard electric capsule or in combination with a power supply board which I forgot to get out and work with a condensed capsule and that's a prototype of the power supply board that links through three holes uh, there there and uh, matching ones there so when they're mounted back to back over the chassis it's just three link wire straight through to connect the two um, and so that generates somewhere around 45 to 50 volts depending how you set it and the voltage it's fed with to provide a bias feed to the uh, capsule now this one's set up so it can work with a condenser capsule but depending if you put these components in or not and what connection you use on that little three-way link you can bypass the uh, condenser microphone pet buffer and feed straight into the phase splitter or you can leave different components out so it will work just as a, um, a conventional uh, yeah, what are they using that as a phase splitter 
or you know the FET, or a bipolar transition to phase. But you, you know, there's multiple options. It's basically got facilities for everything, so you can leave out any bits you don't want. Now like that hopefully it will bolt on there. And the whole can't be a fraction as well. Something else to modify for the next uh, next version. Let me go in. Could be doing just a just a fraction of a millimeter larger. Spacing looks to be spot on. I think this one will also screw in. Nope. It's locked in place. So That's microphone ground there. Let's bring that through and solder it in. Tell yes, it has flowed properly. Right. Then to bypass the condenser input buffer, right, I'll just go straight to the middle pad on that. I'll solve that from underneath for ease of uh, assembly. Right. Um, oh, I was going to try it with, with well, I'll try and make sure it works first because I don't even know it's going to work. It's always, it's always possible that I've got something messed up with it. So uh, let's get the output wires connected. As this is only a uh, for a very brief test to make sure we get an audio through, it's actually a noise test. I'll use an external resistor rather than messing about. I don't, I don't want to mess that board up because uh, it will be used as a, a condenser mod in a uh, future version. You know, a common condenser capsule with a high voltage feed. So all I want to do is temporarily put a bias feed to it just to test that it passes audio. If it does, then a noise test is valid. So this is just going to be a lash on resistor rather than reconfiguring it. Really, it should have left that FET out if I was going to use it purely with an electric capsule. Then one of the FET or the FET uh, uh, drain resistor becomes the feed position becomes the feed resistor for the electric capsule. Let's see if I put the FET in already. That gets a little bit awkward. So this is going to be a, a bodge on the back. Um, I don't have to get to that specific point as all these connect in the same place. Right. So all being well, that should now have a bias supply and produce audio. Uh, does it now? Yes. Not very much, but uh, it's doing something. Okay, that needs further testing. So what voltage it's got in various places. As I say, it's the first time I've ever powered this up, so it is all experimentation. Do basic checks first. See what I've got on the input. Even the, the bias resistors I'm using for the output stage are guesswork. The, the biasing could be wrong. Ah, okay. That looks like the problem. I think we'll put the zero in backwards. Which is odd, because it's this 
symbol straight way around. A uh, PCB program symbol is backwards for that particular part. Oh well. Okay. I will pause for a minute whilst I do that because that's going to take a bit of messing with to get to. I'm going to have to set the thing out the board again. With the Zen of the correct way around, is now working. Not sure which side is the more sensitive side on this mic. Um, I think it uh, could be that one. Try it the other way as well. Yeah, that uh, seems to be a bit lower. That seems to be a bit higher, possibly. And it's difficult to tell. Anyway, oh, see, it gives audio. That's the key point. Um, I've just... that. Uh, the Zenner's now piggybacked on the back of the board uh, rather than put back through the holes. As the only ones I had when I was building this prototype were something like 1.3 watt ones. They're massive. Or oh, the only ones in that in a, a suitable voltage range, 9 to 10 volts. It's a 10 volt. Um, it should really be something like a 250 or 400 milliwatt. A much smaller one. So I'm going to wait until I get the proper ones before I try to refit it through the board because it's a pain to get them out again. Um... They only just fit the holes uh, because the leads are so thick on these, like power rectifiers. Anyway, that is working. Um, it's got a good gain if I turn it up a bit at that distance. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, there is a lot of background noise as, as I'm having to use the main computer to do the screen grab recording uh, for the uh, Audacity graphs or plots or whatever you want to call it, waveforms, so you can see amplitudes and levels. Uh, you can see that is working uh, quite nice to bother of it. I haven't actually listened to it yet but it looks reasonable. Okay so now I'm going to remove that input wire. Let's disconnect it momentarily. Okay see what the noise level is like on this. First of all notice there is no modulation due to hitting it. There is a trace of background noise. That is a significant level of background noise but the, other, the noise should, well that actually has an open input at the moment. Um, oh no, below is the load resistor still connected? Yeah, the pull resistor still connected, so it should be okay. But, uh, I suppose it really ought to have got a relative level, because that is absolutely full up, and audio-wise, I had to have the other one turn somewhat below the MXL level to get an equal voice level to equal distances. So that's probably the level I had the uh, six oh the uh, original circuit turned to for normal audio. Now, if we reconnect the mic capsule and see if that's the same, quieter or louder, then that puts the background noise in a bit better proportion. Okay, so that should now be working again. Yeah, get a few seconds just to settle. So I don't know really. Uh, I should really have this. Uh, the two of these, one side, one and the other side beside. I mean, this board obviously works, but. Um, it's a bit difficult to gauge how well without exact relative settings and uh, knowing the levels. So I think that's uh, going to have to be another video and do some more comparative tests. I mean, one thing is simply to put the old board back in here um, and put the new board on a different connector and have them side by side and uh, see how they perform side by side. Oh, it might be worthwhile getting another of these just for a casing rather than scrapping this one and uh, converting it completely. Use two identical ones that seem to work similarly 
and uh, convert one compared to the other. I think that might be a better way of doing it. So that's probably what I'm going to have to do. So that's uh, that's it for now. And thanks for watching.